program to help you change your beliefs to change your life. Okay, today uh, I'd like to talk about doing what you love. I'm not necessarily talking about doing what you love for a job, because I know you probably see it plastered all over the internet, do what you love for a living, um, and you can make a job, uh, or you can grow a business from doing what you love, and you can definitely do that, that's obviously what I teach. And we're going to be doing a webinar for that next week. Um, myself and Maria Flynn, turning your passion into profits. Um, so I'll put a link down below for that. So it's not necessarily just about kind of your job. It's about doing what you love in life as well. <clears throat> so I guess the first thing we have to figure out is finding out what you love. So this is going to be kind of interactive as well. Hopefully I can get the kind of comments working again and we'll see... Um, if I can see the comments, <laughs> if I can, it's not going to be that good for interactivity. Um, Gina Sende from Angel Tribe, with Gina is saying, love what I do. And I think that's the beauty of the YDF Tribe as well, over at Your Digital Formula. We've got about 260 entrepreneurs in there. And they're all doing totally what they love. And I want to talk about the benefits of that as well. But I'd like to know first, are you doing what you love just now. Somebody's just mentioned Katrina Francis saying photography there. So are you doing what you love? And tell me what it is that you love doing. Because it would be good to get a kind of a different perspective on things. Because I, I can think of a load of things that I've seen online when people do what they love. Um, and it's great to see. But I'd like to get your perspective on it. What do you kind of love to do? Not just in business, but in your spare time as well. Um, or you might have made it your business or you might have made it your career. Um, Don Adams Bowen, love photography, love to write, brilliant, love to write myself as well, <laughs> don't get that much time nowadays, but I love it as well, Donna. Erin um, Gavin, no, I can't even think of what I love doing, although I know it is not snow shoveling. Well, at least you know something you don't love doing, so that's a good start, that's a good thing as well. I'm going to sneeze, you know, when one of these sneezes come, I'm going to have to look at the right. One wee second. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> um, somebody's saying, I don't know how to pronounce the name. I do apologise. I love photography, a cloud formation in the sky. And there's something weird, and there's not something weird about clouds, but I love kind of clouds as well. I've always had a fascination um, with clouds and kind of uh, photographing them as well. I've got loads of photos of kind of clouds and the sky, particularly the sky and the clouds. Something I love about that. Tammy Hooter is saying I love gardening, which is brilliant. Um, I love my life. I love this beautiful world. Yeah, so we're talking about what you love doing in this kind of beautiful world. Obviously, the world is a beautiful place, but it's about what you love doing in this kind of beautiful world. Um, Anne Carnegie is saying I love gardening as well. Wendy Mai McNutt, I love to learn, read, watching people how to build their business. Excellent. Um, just see if there's any more comments. As I said, we're sticking a wee bit. Um, Jeannie Fernandez, I love growing vegetables and herbs. Excellent. Excellent. So we're getting uh, kind of a fair few kind of number of people doing different things. Um, Anne Libby, being a mom. Excellent as well. Um, Liz Stevenson, I enjoy being out in fresh air, walking the dog, meeting different people. Brilliant. Um, the comments are sticking again. So we're getting a fair number of people doing different things that they love doing. And it's about the benefits of doing what you love as well. I kind of practice and preach, not practice and preach, but I kind of teach people how to kind of make a living from what they love doing, if that's what they want to do. But when you do something that you love, what generally happens is you feel more fulfilled in life. Rather than kind of doing a job that you hate and then coming back and you're just kind of sitting around the house and kind of watching TV, which is fine if you like doing that, just to relax and chill out after a hard day's work, totally cool. But if you're doing something that you love after coming home from work or as your career or as your business, then you feel there's a sense of fulfillment there, that you're doing something and that you totally love and you can immerse yourself in it. And if you didn't do it for a business or a career, that you, do, you just do it for free in your spare time because you love doing it. And the more you kind of love doing something, the more you start to learn 
about the topic it is that you love doing. For example, gardening, gardening in herbs or planting vegetables in herbs. You get to learn more and more about kind of vegetables and herbs, what ones are good for you, how to grow them, what kind of soil, the soil type, um, precipitation, stuff like that. Everything to do with vegetables and herbs and growing vegetables and herbs. And you get you gain more knowledge that way as well. And when you gain more knowledge, that's when you can possibly turn it into a business as well, which is a fantastic thing to do because you get to grow a business doing something that you love. If that's what you want to do, you might just want to do it in your spare time because you just get immersed in it. It relaxes you um, as well. And when you're doing something that you love as well, you tend to become more productive in all areas of your life, in all the different areas of your life. You become more productive in what you're doing. If you're doing it as a business, you become more productive in it because you're immersed in it, because you really, truly feel that sense of fulfillment and you just want to learn as much as possible about it. And then you might start teaching others. Or if you're doing it kind of in your spare time as well, you still do the same and you become more productive at home and at work as well. Studies have shown that if you have a kind of hobby or something that you love doing, then you become more productive in general. And you're also more motivated as well. So not just doing a job that you love. I mean, I I can't begin to explain how much I love doing what I do. I mean, I'm kind of, this business for me, I'm doing a live show just now and I'm kind of getting paid for it. I'm not getting paid for doing the live show, but because people are getting to know, like, and trust me, they kind of seek out my kind of programs and stuff like that. And that's how I get paid. But I love doing these live shows. I love interacting with you um, as well and just getting your questions, answering questions and just interacting in general and just kind of teaching as well. I love kind of doing the teaching side of it, although I don't see myself as a teacher. I just see myself as kind of talking to you about a topic I love. And I suppose that is kind of teaching in a way. But I, I just love doing what I do. And I could talk about this all day, personal development. I could talk about all day and online business I could talk about all day as well, just because I, I love it so much. And this is kind of a dream to get paid for what I'm doing. And it's an amazing dream kind of come true. And it's just grown every single day. So you become more motivated when you do what you love as well. Even in your spare time, you become more motivated to learn more about the topic that, the, that you kind of love. And you become more motivated in life in general as well. Because a lot of us... I think I read a statistic, and this is an American statistic, but I would imagine it's the kind of same all over the world. 80% of the people that are working just now don't like their jobs. 80% of people that are working don't like the job. And certainly when I was working, I when I was working in the corporate world, I worked for a big telecommunications company um, on the business side of things, and I, I hated it. I, I just It was good money. I had a brilliant pension. I had a good share scheme as well. Um, and I thought about all that, but I thought, Jesus Christ, I'm going to have to wait for 35 years or 40 years before I see the benefits of that good pension or the benefits of the, the share scheme or the benefits of the pay. Why the hell would I want to do that for 40 years? And I just kept banging my head against the computer. It was just a nightmare just going into work and I hated, dreaded getting up for work. And this is where I came to like, okay, you have to I have to do something about this. If I hate my job, there's no point complaining about it if I'm not going to do anything about it. And there's just no point complaining about anything if you're not going to do anything about it. Just don't complain unless you're going to do something about it. So I did something about it. I started get, getting up early at half past four in the morning to do what I loved. And that was writing on the blog. That's how I first started. So I would write articles, kind of research. I loved the research. And all the time I was doing that, I was gaining more and more and more knowledge because I was reading different perspectives from other people. So if I was going to kind of write an article on procrastination, I would not only have my own thoughts on it, I would gather up everybody else's thoughts as well and put that into hopefully a good article as well. I don't get so much time um, to write nowadays, but I still love doing it when I do it. When I do get the time to kind of sit down, really research and think about it, I still really love doing it. And when you're doing something like this as well, hopefully, when I'm kind of um, telling you what I'm doing and kind of um, showing you what I'm doing because I love it, hopefully I'm motivating you as well. And that's the beauty of doing something like this as well. You can teach other people. And really, for me, that's what it's all about. And that's when I kind of looked to business in a whole different light when I thought, 
when I ask the question, how can I help more people rather than how can I get more money? It's now about how can I help more people kind of around the world. And that's my motivation. That's what I love to do. But you become a source of inspiration or a source of motivation for other people as well. When somebody sees you doing what you absolutely love to do, how motivating is that? And just say, I would love to have that motivation. I would love to have that passion, that drive, that enthusiasm. It just kind of rubs on on other people as well. Even people watching a live show like this, hopefully you're kind of inspired a wee bit to kind of do what you love as well or find out what you love to do as well. I'm just going to go over to some comments here, see if we're unstuck. We're not unstuck. And it's still stuck just now. Um, there's some coming through. Um, hopefully it's still working okay, yeah. Anne Mooney Herbs, totally motivated by... Oh, thank you, Anne. Totally motivi motivated by you, she's saying. Thank you very much. Um, Sunita Esser, do the things you like to do. Makes one happy. Definitely makes you a lot happy. And we'll go on to talk about that as well. Um, Kim Hamilton, you're a great writer as well, Stephen. Thank you very much. Kim, I really appreciate you saying that. Um, Cindy Timmers, um, welcome to you. Yes, doing what you love gives you energy. I now feel it very well. When I quit in my job as a teacher and decided to go for myself as a creative coach, I'm not depressed anymore, feel positive energy. And that's a huge benefit about it as well. Obviously, you still get those moments in your business when you're thinking, oh, this is kind of, kind of stressful. You've got deadlines, you've got people to meet, you've got loads of appointments, you've got websites to build, you've got products to create. There's a lot of stress Kind of, or there can be, but because you love doing what you do, you don't mind it. It's not work. It doesn't feel like work. I don't think I've ever, ever felt that this, my business, felt like work. Since I started, um, kind of went full time in 2012, it's never, ever, ever once felt like work because I totally love what I do. And it's different every single day. I get to talk to different people every single day. It's brilliant. Um, Tammy Hooter. Um, I love what you do. <laughs> I thought you were going to say I love what I do, but I th you said I love what you do. Thank you very much. Um, Verena Decker, I love it. I always want to do what I love. Why waste time? And that's it. Why waste time? That's a big question there. Why waste kind of 40 years of life doing something you don't like? Now, I understand we've got to bring the money. We've got to put the food on the table. We've got to feed our families and stuff like that. But at the same time, when you're doing that, you can still look for something that you love. Even if it's a career that you love, changing careers to do something that you love. And if you've not got the qualifications, you go out and get the qualification to do something you love. If it's about starting a business, you might want to write a book. Do that part time while you're kind of doing your career full time just now. And really get passionate about it, really get into it as well. And a lot of people think, when they think about things like this, they think, who am I to write a book, for example? You are you. You are your unique selling point. You've got a different perspective on life. Your reality is totally different from everybody else's reality. Not one person has the same reality as you. That's why you're different. That's why you can write that book. That's why you can start your business. That's why you can do start a new career. That's why you can go to university. That's why you can do what you want to do because you are you. And you've got to remember that. You are your own unique selling point. And most people think they're so down on themselves. They think... I couldn't possibly do that. Who am I to do that? You've got to just do it. Just really do it. Just go for it. I know I'm making it sound easier than what it is, but if you think about it, it is easy. You've just got to make the decision to do something that you love to do or you really want to do, at least to try it out. Because you don't want to be sitting in your kind of lying in your deathbed when you're 90, 100 years old or whatever and say, shit, I wish I'd tried that. I wish I'd gone to university. I wish I'd written that book. I wish I'd started that business. I'd, I'd, I'd hate to kind of be in my deathbed and think that. And that's why I thought, right, I'm going to give myself a kick up the arse. If I'm going to moan about having a shitty job that I don't like, even though it's good money, then I have to do something about it. And that's what I did. Two and a half hours earlier, I got up every day and started doing doing stuff. And it took me quite ages to kind of figure it all out. But I got there in the end and I never gave up and just kept on going. And I'd love for you to have that feeling as well. Um, because even though it took me six years to really get going in my business, it would have taken me 40 years working in a shitty job that I hated to get anywhere. And I'd probably I'd be about 70 years old over in the UK. They've upped the kind of pension age to, I think, is 68 um, just now. So I'd be 68 
by the time I was going to get a good kind of pension, good share scheme and stuff like that. And I didn't want to wait. Uh, back in the days, I didn't want to wait another 30 years just for that to happen. So instead, I waited kind of six years and built up my knowledge and just kept on going with what I loved, which was writing at the time. And I kept on going with it. And it was far better getting an education that way. It's far better than any university education I could have ever had doing those six years, working for myself and figuring out everything for myself as well. And you can do that as well. So I'm glad I took the six years it took to start the business proper rather than waste 40 years in doing something that I absolutely hated. And I did hate it. Although I was an addiction worker, I left that job and became an addiction worker, which I loved doing as well. Um, but it was all preparation for what I'm doing just now, which was great. So it was all... Um, Kind of, yeah, it was synchronicity kind of at work as well. It was all preparation for what I was want to do just now. Um, other good things as well, obviously it's good for your mental health. If you do what you love, it's amazing for your mental well-being as well. So it's not bit just about um, kind of doing what you love, but it's good for your mind, body and spirit as well. Because you're much more happier. You release those kind of hormones that make you feel happier as well because you're doing what you love doing as well even if that's reading if reading is what you love then that can make you happier that can make you feel less depressed um, and that's that's a beauty of doing what you love as well and that's a beauty of trying to find out what you love because a lot of us we might not have an idea of what we love doing until we actually go out and try different things like I thought when I was younger I thought I, I would love to travel I would just love to travel the world would be fantastic it'd be amazing and then when I did it, I kind of left a couple of jobs. I say I mentioned this story before. I left a few jobs, rather stupidly, and kind of good jobs as well, and just decided to up and leave. So I went to Australia and came back two and a half weeks later. I told that story last week. But I tried it, and I figured out, no, I didn't like traveling. Um, it's one of the loneliest things in the world, traveling on your own. Uh, and I thought, this will be dead easy. I love my own time. But when you're going to a different country and you're traveling, it's a bit different from spending time on your own at home. Um, it's totally different, actually. So I figured out that I didn't like traveling. And if I did love traveling, I would have made a damn good go of it and just kind of made a living from traveling. I'd have wrote for a guide or something like that, for a travel guide, or I'd have, I'd have done something. I'd have done live videos from all around the world or made a product about traveling or something. I would have made it work if I loved traveling. I thought I was going to like it. I thought I was going to love it. I didn't, but I tried it found out I didn't and just move on to something else and I think that's what you have to do as well if you can't figure out what you love to do just now and another benefit as well is I think a lot of your family and kind of friends and peers kind of start to look up to you as well because they see you doing what you love and it kind of motivates them to ask the question if they can do it why can't I do it because I'm totally no different from you I'm no smarter than you. I've not got as as much knowledge as you. I've not got the knowledge that you've got. So if I can do this, honestly, anybody could do this. And that's what the beauty of finding out what you love to do is all about. And the part of the beauty is the research and finding out more about yourself. Like when I kind of tried the traveling, I found out that I didn't really like traveling on my own. Now, it'd be different if I was travelling with Sharon now. That might be a totally different story because I've got Sharon with me, somebody I totally and utterly adore. Um, and it would be a different kind of story if I was going travelling around the world now. But obviously, Sharon's got a career. I've got the business here as well. But when we're a wee bit older, we might travel the world as well. And we kind of travel every year as well. We go, it's not the same, but we go on cruises and stuff like that. And we get off of different um, countries and kind of explore, but it's not the same as kind of going around the world and traveling on the trains and getting immersed in the culture. Um, so where was I there? I was talking about something. I can't remember, but it's good for your, your mental well-being. So it's all about your kind of mental health as well. Um, yeah, that was it. <laughs> you start to find out about what you kind of love by experimenting with different things. You might love to volunteer, for example, and help other people. Uh, and that's a brilliant way, actually, for getting to know yourself as well. And when you're doing something you love as well, you always want to kind of learn more about it. 
and kind of improve upon what you've learned as well. Maybe improve upon the things you've kind of learned and maybe make it better as well. And people will start to come to you for advice on that as well. And you'll probably find you love talking about it because you love kind of you love the topic and you love teaching about it as well. And that might lead to a whole different um, direction for you in life as well. So I know I've kind of gone on a wee bit there. Um, I just love talking about this and I love talking to people about it. Um, Pushpa Bali, I love to practice singing and music, but now I'm a, I am a doctor by profession. I don't know what I wanted. So do you enjoy being a doctor, Pushpa Bali? I know I, I could imagine a lot of people think being a doctor must be so good, but it must be really, really hard work as well. And it must be kind of grueling, the hours that you have to put in as well. And um, Patty Conan, had a senior lady, 80 plus, asked me if I worked. I said, yes, I love my job. She was so happy to hear this. I got a hug from a wonderful stranger. Life is short. Try it. Excellent, Patty. Love that story. Love that story. So when people see your enthusiasm and your passion and your kind of drive to do the job that you love or to do something that you love, they are kind of motivated and they're touched and moved by your story as well. Because um, you don't see a lot of people who are happy in their jobs in particular. Um, so you, you don't, you just don't see a lot of it and it's a shame because we can do something to change that. And I think the world is changing as well. In 10 years time, the world is going to be a totally different place and the workforce we're talking about because we've got, we've hit the knowledge um, kind of stage of life. Or uh, So it's, this is like a knowledge revolution. Everybody's kind of gaining knowledge about a certain area that they they kind of love and they're passionate about. And they're passing that on to other people and they're making their kind of businesses um, from it as well. Or they're growing a business from that knowledge. And the knowledge revolution is kind of, it's just kind of revolutionized the whole world. And I think it's revolutionizing the workplace as well. Because more people are informed, much more informed. And they, they know that there is a choice. It might be hard work for a couple of years, but it's better than working for 40 or 50 years for someone that you don't like or a a workplace that you don't like or doing a job that you don't like. So I'd much rather spend a couple of years um, kind of finding out what I really love to do and trying to make it work for me rather than work for 50 years for somebody else and realise their dreams. And that that's kind of what it's all about as well. So we've got to, in 10 years' time, I think there's going to be more. In fact, I was talking to Maria Flynn the other day and she was saying the number of entrepreneurs, particularly female entrepreneurs, that are going to be starting up their own business is going to triple than what it is at the moment. I don't know the exact figures, I need to find out, but Maria was talking about that the other day. So it's going to triple by the year 2020. Imagine that. There's, it's going to triple by the year 2020. That, so that means there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people out there starting up in their own business that have moved away from the workforce. And we can see that already happening because people are getting much more savvy. They're realizing, yeah, I can start a business, I can do this. Um, and be much happier and working for themselves as well. Um, so I thought that was a really interesting statistic. And Maria, I don't know if you kind of found out more. You you kind of quoted the, the stats and that. I don't know if that's the exact figure, but I think it was tripled by the year 2020. And you don't have to wait till 2020. So myself and Maria, as I said at the beginning, we've got a, a kind of live training coming up next Wednesday to turn your pa um, passion into profits as well. Five steps to turn your passion into profits. And we'll put a link down below for that if that's what interests you as well. If you've got a passion and you want to do that kind of for a living or, you want, or you're thinking about it, then it's going to be brilliant training for you to come on as well. So that's next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and we'll put a link down below for that as well if you're interested in that. And right, I'll see if these comments have unstuck um, just before I go. I realise I've kind of, I've not gone on a wee bit, but I've spoke about um, a wee bit kind of longer than I anticipated. I just love this topic, love talking about it, and love getting you fired up, hopefully, as well. Um, no, the comments are still sticking. Sue Gasco, I don't know if there's an old comment. Um, at 70, I am loving my life because I am loving myself. Brilliant point. I, Sue Gasco just said, I'm loving my life because I'm loving myself. And that's great because you find out more about yourself and what you love to do as well. And you're loving yourself more because of it as well. Brilliant to see. Yeah, the comments are still sticking, unfortunately. Um, I think this is old comments. 
or all their comments I'm reading. Um, Stephen Webb is saying, yay, more female entrepreneurs means more in leadership. De I think it's a good thing. It was seen over the last three or four years, Stephen, I've seen more and more, you've probably seen them, kind of the webinars and um, the live trainings that people do. You've probably seen more and more female entrepreneurs coming into the market, which is a brilliant thing. It was a really, really good thing to see. You see that confidence kind of in women as well coming on to can doing the webinars and doing the trainings and starting their own business. And a few I can think of just now, we've got Marie Forley, we've got um, a big name, we've got Jennifer Gresham, we've got Terry Cole um, as well, we've got Farnish Brock, Kathy Pressland, we've got Maria Flynn as well, people from the YDF tribe, Lorraine Emmett, um, uh, Natalie Masafia, we've got loads of people up and coming just now, and as well as the big names, the big female entrepreneurs we've got out there just now as well. There's loads of them, and it's brilliant to see. You're right, Stephen, it is brilliant to see, um, because there's no longer going to be that glass ceiling that um, kind of female females have in the kind of workplace and the careers that they've got. They're just saying, bugger this, I'm going to start my own business, and they're becoming really successful. And it is brilliant to see. Um, Anka, Anka Neg is saying, good show today. Now find the power to do what you dream. Yes, exactly. Find the power to do what you dream. And what you dream about, put a time limit on it. Put a date on it and find out as much as possible as you can and do something with it. Start taking actions towards your dreams every single day. So that would be my kind of last parting thought there before I go just now. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, share this video. You can share it just now and people will get to watch the replay as well, which is always brilliant. And let me see a few hearts if you enjoyed this talk as well. See a few hearts flying across. Um, and sorry about the comments sticking. I don't know what's what's going on there. It's just a bit funky just now, Facebook. But hopefully I got to a few comments and helped, um, helped you as well. So thank you very much for watching today. I'll put the links down below for the live training that myself and Maria Flynn's got, if you're interested in that, and a link for the kind of topics we've been talking about today as well. So until tomorrow, have a brilliant day, whatever you're doing, and namaste. Take care. Bye now.